Do you know the real history of Halloween? Chances are it's far more Catholic than you may think. The historian of the Western Dominican province, Father Augustine Thompson, has given us a fascinating perspective on the holiday. When he researched this topic some 30 years ago for Catholic Parent Magazine, Halloween had not yet been appropriated by the Satanists, neo-pagans, and occultists as it has been today. In those days, Halloween was mostly about kids wearing cute costumes and asking for candy. But now, Halloween is mostly identified with adults involved in sometimes very serious misbehavior. If a parent today wishes to let their kids go out on Halloween, we would suggest that before they do, they investigate the extent to which the occultists and neo-pagans of their area have taken over the celebration. If this has happened, they might consider having their kids dress up as saints and have a party at home. Now, we've all heard the allegations. Halloween is a pagan rite, dating back to some pre-Christian festival among the Celtic Druids that escaped church suppression. Now, even today, modern pagans and witches continue to celebrate this ancient festival. And if you let your kids go trick-or-treating, they'll be worshiping the devil or other pagan gods. The origins of Halloween are, in fact, very Christian and rather American. Halloween falls on October 31st because of a pope, and its observances are the result of medieval Catholic piety. Now, it's true that the ancient Celts of Ireland and Britain celebrated a minor festival on October 31st, as they did on the last day of most every month of the year. However, Halloween falls on the last day of October because of the solemnity of all saints, or All Hallows, which falls on November 1st. The feast in honor of all the saints in heaven used to be celebrated on May 13th, but Pope Gregory III moved it to November 1st, the dedication day of All Saints Chapel in St. Peter's in Rome. Later in the 840s, Pope Gregory IV commanded that all saints be celebrated throughout the entire church, and so the holy day spread to Ireland. The day before All Saints was the feast's evening vigil, All Hallows' Eve, or Halloween. But in those days, Halloween didn't have any special significance for Christians or for the long-dead Celtic pagans. It was in 998 that Saint Odillo, the abbot of the powerful monastery of Cluny in southern France, added a celebration to November 2nd. This was a day of prayer for all the souls of all the faithful departed. This feast, called All Souls Day, spread from France to the rest of Europe. So, now the church had feasts for all the souls in heaven and all the souls in purgatory. But what about those in the other place? Now, it seems that Irish Catholic peasants worried about the unfortunate souls in hell. After all, if the souls in hell are left out when the celebration of those in heaven and purgatory, they might be unhappy well, unhappy enough to cause trouble. So it became customary to bang pots and pans on All Hallows' Eve, just to let the damned know they were not forgotten. Thus, in Ireland at least, all the dead came to be at least remembered, even if the clergy were not terribly sympathetic to Halloween, or never allowed an all-damned day to enter the church's calendar. But this still isn't our modern celebration of Halloween. Our traditions center on the dressing up in fanciful costumes, which isn't Irish at all. Rather, this custom arose in France during the 14th and 15th centuries. Now, late medieval Europe was hit by repeated outbreaks of the bubonic plague, or the Black Death, and it lost about half its population. Now, it is not surprising that Catholics during this period became more concerned about the afterlife. More masses were said on All Souls Day, and artistic representations were devised to remind everyone of their own mortality. Now, we know these representations. These are the Dances of the Dead, or the Dance of the Dead, which was commonly printed on the walls of cemeteries and shows the devil leading a daisy chain of people, popes, kings, ladies, knights, monks, peasants, lepers, etc., into the tomb. Sometimes the dance was performed on All Souls Day itself as a living display 
with people dressed up in garb of various states of life. But the French dressed up on All Souls Day, not Halloween. And it was the Irish who had Halloween, and they did not dress up. How the two became intermingled probably happened first in the British colonies of North America during the 1700s, when Irish and French Catholics began to intermarry. The Irish focus on hell gave the French masquerade an even more macabre twist. But as every young ghoul knows, dressing up isn't the point. The point is to get as many goodies as possible. So where on earth did the old trick-or-treat custom come from? Now, trick-or-treat is perhaps the oddest and most American addition to Halloween and is the unwilling contribution of English Catholics. But why? During the penal period of the late 1500s to the 1700s in England, Catholics had no legal rights. They could not hold office. They were subject to fines, jail, and heavy taxes. It was a capital offense, for example, to say mass, and hundreds of priests were martyred. Now, occasionally, English Catholics resisted, sometimes foolishly. Now, one of the most foolish acts of resistance was a plot to blow up the Protestant king, King James I, and his parliament with gunpowder. This was supposed to trigger a Catholic uprising against the oppression. Now, the ill-conceived gunpowder plot was foiled on November 5, 1605, when the man guarding the gunpowder, a reckless convert named Guy Fawkes, was captured and arrested. He was hanged, and the plot fizzled. Now, November 5th, Guy Fawkes Day, became a great celebration in England, and so it remains today. Now, during the penal periods, on Guy Fawkes Day, bands of revelers would put on masks and visit local Catholics in the dead of night, demanding beer, cakes, for their celebration. This was trick-or-treat. Guy Fawkes Day arrived in the American colonies with the first English settlers. But by the time of the American Revolution, Old King James and Guy Fawkes had pretty much been forgotten. Trick-or-treat, however, was too much fun to give up. So eventually, trick-or-treat moved to October 31st, the day of the Irish-French masquerade. And in America, trick-or-treat was not limited to Catholics. The mixture of various immigrant traditions known as Halloween had become a fixture in the United States by the early 1800s. Now, to this day, it remains unknown even in Europe, even in the countries from which some of the customs originated. But what about witches? Well, they are one of the last additions. It was the greeting card industry that added them in the late 1800s. Now, Halloween was already ghoulish, so they thought, why not give witches a place on greeting cards? Now, the Halloween card has long since failed, although it has recently seen a resurgence. But the witches stayed. And what about jack-o'-lanterns? So too, in the late 1800s, ill-informed folklorists introduced the jack-o'-lantern. They thought that Halloween was druidic and pagan in origin. Now, lamps made from turnips, not pumpkins, had been part of the ancient Celtic harvest festival. So they were translated to the American Halloween celebration in the form of a pumpkin. So, the next time someone claims that Halloween is a cruel trick to lure your children into worshiping the devil, I suggest you tell them the real origin of All Hallows' Eve and invite them to consider its Christian significance along with the two greater and more important Catholic festivals that follow, that is All Saints' Day and All Souls' Day. Brothers and sisters, this is Father Brad Elliott for the Western Dominican Province. For more information, just go to opwest.org.